Scotch of Kern County, and he's also the House Minority Leader, Representative Kevin McCarthy. Thank you again for joining me. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Last time we spoke uh, about a month ago, you placed a lot of importance on uniting the two parties in light of those Capitol Hill riots. What efforts have you made toward unity since then? Well, we've made some progress. I've reached out to a number of Democrats. We've talked, um, trying to work forward on issues that uh, would best be for America. Unfortunately, we're watching today a bill on the floor that um, dealing with COVID. And we've passed four other COVID bills on a bipartisan basis, but unfortunately, this one is not. Less than 9% of it goes for COVID. Um, there's a number of things that are in there that Pelosi is paying people off. One happens to be in the Silicon Valley with the $110 million tunnel, but now she added, made it up to $140 million last night. Instead of focusing on getting people back to work, back to school, and back to health. I think that's where our priority should be, and that's where we can really find common ground. And something continuing to be a challenge for children, parents, and uh, educators in California is that our schools are still closed. Governor Newsom has said he wants schools to reopen immediately, but teachers unions and uh, they're saying that the state isn't quite ready to do that safely. Have you had any conversations with the state, with, with counties or with unions about where we go from here? Yeah, I've talked to a number of people and to parents. You know, parents today are not only just the parents, they're the tutors, they're the teachers, they're the coaches, they're the music instructors. Um, there's more than 3 million kids who are now reaching the first full year that they have not been in the classroom. We're watching from our own school district where the D's and F's have in increased. I watched from current behavior, we're now finding that from the emergency rooms, there's more suicide um, thoughts from children. We've watched from the Virginia pediatrics, they now find a 90% increase in anxiety, depression, obesity. I mean, there's so many effects that are happening to our children. We need to get them back in school. And we've passed a number of bills with billions of dollars. Unfortunately, like in our last bill, we put out $68 billion for getting schools. Well, only $4 billion of that spent. And we asked to put the rest of it towards schools that would open. But unfortunately, three times the Democrats have stopped that. And then in this latest bill, 95% of this money can't go out this year. And 75% of it won't go out until 2023. So that's not creating the incentive. And the governor has failed many times. One, how, how far he shut the uh, state down, if you look at where Florida is in California, but more importantly, getting the vaccines out. West Virginia has done an amazing job far surpassed California. California is one of the worst states when it comes to administering the vaccine, and especially here in Kern County. I've worked with the mayor. She's got a facility open Kern in the fairgrounds where we can do more than 5,000 vaccines a day, but we don't have the vaccines because the governor is, is the one who can push it out, and we're not getting them. So it's really been a setback for us in many ways. But I want the schools to open, but I want the schools to be safe for the, for the students and for the teachers. And I think a priority we could have done from doing it through age, but also doing it through the teachers and get these schools open is not just the kids learning. It's also coming down to anxiety, depression, suicide, and others. It's really harming society in many different ways. And another thing that's I think on the forefront of people's minds right now, the, the House today is aiming to pass that $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package and send it to the Senate. You're in a unique position of following not only the national implications of this bill, but the Kern County implications as well. From what you can tell, what will this bill mean for the people in your home community? You know, it, it, won't, it won't do what, um, what we need in our community. With less than 9% going to COVID, we're not going to get more vaccines. The money for schools, 95% of it doesn't come out this year, so it's not helping to open schools. The boondoggles in there that they're putting in for transportation when it comes to Silicon Valley, our bridge for Schumer, doesn't do anything for the hardworking taxpayers of Kern County except take more of your money. So no, I'm gonna vote no on it because it is, does not help for COVID relief and it does not assist Kern County in the manner in which I think we can to get our economy moving again and our schools open. And another big deal here in Kern County, you were in Texas talking oil a few weeks ago. And in Kern County, we have a big supervisor's meeting coming up pertaining 
to adding more oil wells here. What do you think about that proposal? And to your understanding, is it possible that any Biden administration oil policies could affect it? Well, yeah. I mean, we've watched President Biden already, by a stroke of a pen, eliminate a million jobs. Much of it comes in the energy industry. And that only makes America weaker and our adversaries stronger. You not only eliminate jobs, but America is becoming energy independent. We will still need the energy, but what we'll do is we'll buy it from our adversaries, Russia. But when you look at it from an environmental point of view, it even makes our economy worse and our environment worse because American energy is cleaner than Russian energy. Um, the natural gas from Russia is 42% dirtier than American natural gas. American natural gas is 42% cleaner than theirs. And if you're not putting it in a pipeline, then you're moving it on a ship or a train that has more uh, capability of creating a spill. And we're eliminating a number of jobs Jobs. And we found that the president's pen has already done that by stopping any ability to drill on federal lands, which we have the capability of doing here in Kern County. Now, there's been a lot made about our other Kern County representative, David Valadeo, and his standing within the Republican Party, considering that he was one of the few Republicans that voted to impeach former President Trump. Uh, you and Valadeo are faces of the Republican Party in Kern County. So have you guys discussed your difference in opinion about the impeachment? Yeah, and David Valadeo does an amazing job. David Valadeo serves on appropriations, which is very vital for Kern County and Kings and Tulare County, those that he represents. David Valadeo has a different district than mine. Uh, we both listen to our constituents to represent them best. Uh, I'm very, very proud to serve with David Valadeo. And doesn't mean we're going to agree 100% of the time, but what it truly means is the Republican Party is a very big tent, that there's a place for everybody. If you believe in the exceptionalism of this country, if you believe in the free enterprise system, if you believe in the ability to make your own decisions going forward, the Republican Party is the place that we want you a part of. Now, late in January, you were in Florida visiting with former President Trump, reportedly to discuss winning back the House in 2022. What role do you think uh, the former president will play in the 2022 midterms and in the Republican Party moving forward? Look, I believe the Republican Party is made up of ideas. And everybody is welcome in the Republican Party. We want the very best ideas to move forward. Republicans had a very good election when it came to Congress. It was only the first time since 1994 no Republican incumbent lost. Th this majority that the Democrats have with five seats is the smallest majority they had in more than a hundred years. We have the ability to win the majority and so I want everybody to be able to join and help us do just that. And uh, speaking of presidents, we know you're focused on many things such as schools, unity, and COVID relief right now. And then in 2022, your focus appears to be on winning back the House. What's the plan for 2024? Is a McCarthy presidential run out of the question? <laughs> no, we never think of that. Look, I, I am so honored to be able to have the privilege of uh, serving the 23rd Congressional District. Um, that's my mission. That's my goal. And how best to do that, I'm going to work as hard as possible to make that happen. And finally, I, I think it's no secret, you mentioned her at the top of the interview, that, that you and Nancy Pelosi don't see eye to eye very often. Given some of the public statements that you two have had, uh, about each other in, in recent memory. It might lead some to believe that there's some animosity between you two, to put it politely. Uh, in the interest of unity, though, Mr. Leader, I'd like to ask if, if you can tell me something that you like about Speaker Pelosi. I, I think she is a ma an amazing wife, mother, and grandmother. I've watched her with her grandchildren um, show the love and the discipline at the same time. Uh, I watched her and Paul uh, interact with Judy and I have seen him many times. And, I, th I think she is a tremendous grandmother and mother and uh, uh, wife. I mean, I'm amazed that she's, she does all that and in her job. I mean, she's a worthy adversary. She's tough. Now, I, I philosophically disagree with her. Uh, we have heated debates, um, but I respect, I respect what she does. Mr. Leader, thank you for your time and good luck in Washington. Thank you.